Oh, hello there, friends. How are you? Ash here with Gent Sense. I was just going over my not at all make believe book of the greatest things I've smelled this year. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not just a random book with like scribbles in it. Mm -mm. But yeah, I got a doozy for you. Today we're gonna be talking about 10 of the best things that I've smelled this year. Some fragrances that just, they put the wind in my sails. They are the wind beneath my wings. Uh, not all of these came out this year. Some of them did, but other fragrances have been out for a while. I'm just late to the party on them which uh, happens sometimes, you know, when there are literally thousands of new fragrances released every year. This is kind of hard to keep up with, man. But we got 10 fragrances here that I think are just stunning. Let's jump into it, let's talk about them. You know what else is stunning? That's right, friends, 10% off code. It's very stunning. Gents10 is the code, twistedlily.com or maxaroma.com or 10 gents, that will get you 10% off of luckyscent.com. The other code gents10 will get you 10% off the other two websites. Cool, cool. All right, let's jump into it. The first fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is a clone fragrance. It's the only clone in this list from the house of Latafa, and the fragrance is Comra. This is probably one of, if not the most sought after clone fragrances right now, and for good reason. Obviously, this is a clone of Angel Share, by by Killian. In case you couldn't tell by the not at all obvious knockoff imitation bottle, and the cap is really hard to take off sometimes. But this is a great clone. It's kind of a twist on Angel Share. It's not exactly the same, but you get that booziness, you get that sweetness, that richness, that depth, really nice performance. And actually the presentation on the whole is somehow better with the Latafa than the Killian. It's it's weird to me too. The bottle is nice. I think the bottle is a little bit nicer looking on the Killian. The cap is kind of a wash, but then the box is way better with the Latafa than the Killian. Obviously presentation though does not matter. What matters is the fragrance, how it smells. And this thing for about $30 US is the best alternative to Angel Share on the market, period. You get the full thing, the full deal, you get the look, you get the smell, you get the performance. This stuff really surprised me. And then we'll go with the designer next, Gentleman Reserve Privé. Now this is one of the most popular releases, at least in the fragrance community of this year. And it makes sense. It's an iris based fragrance, but it has a nice warmth to it, a nice booziness. So you have that sweetness that offsets the iris a little bit. It doesn't get uh, too makeup-y, you know, not too powdery. Even my wife, who is sometimes not a fan, of some iris fragrances, loves this one. It also has a little gourmand edge to it. You know, it's got some chestnut in here. And uh, I would say, even if you're maybe not a fan of the more hardcore iris fragrances out there, the Dior Homme Intenses, the Valentino Womo Intenses, even the Gentleman Eau de Parfums of the world, still check this one out, because this one might work for you a lot better, and I think it's great. Next up, let's talk about this one, Ganymede. It's not new, but this is one of those ones that I was late to the party for and I feel bad. And uh, it's kind of funny, I've seen comments from people. Uh, some people say, you know, I love Ganymede, but my wife absolutely hates it, like despises this stuff. Then I'll see other people comment and be like, oh, Ganymede? Yeah, it's just one of my most complimented fragrances ever. So it's uh, definitely potentially divisive, depending on who you talk to. It's got suede, saffron, violet, and a minerality to it. And that minerality is what I adore about this thing. Just from the atomizer alone, you get that big blast of like almost an effervescent, rocky minerality to it. Uh, I mean, that is how it's described. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. And it's just show-stopping to me. It's like a completely new take on freshness. And that one I fell in love with. I actually smelled it first from a little uh, decant. Then I bought the full bottle. Back to designers, Terre d'Hermes, OGV. Uh, this stuff, the opening does it for me. It's this citron that's very natural smelling, but not so rindy and potentially bitter as something like Light Blue Forever. So some people, they're gonna get turned off by that Light Blue Forever style of citrus. This one has enough of that natural feeling that it really draws me in, but then it's somehow more wearable, easier to pull off. Also has juniper in here, and this one also has its own little bit of minerality. Maybe that's just something I really enjoy. Love this one, great high quality, fresh fragrance, a little bit of class to it as well. Great addition to the Terre d'Hermes line. I like this stuff so much that I don't even mind that Terre d'Hermes 
Otre Fresh is harder to find. Then another one that I smelled first from a decant and then bought, it is Mystery Tobacco from Carolina Herrera. And this one right here kicked off my uh, Pokemon-esque, gotta have them all kind of mindset that I have now for this line of fragrances. It is a little bit similar to Red Tobacco uh, from Mansara or Carlisle from Parfums de Marley, but truth be told, I prefer this to both of those. So this has tonka, patchouli, guyac wood, little citrus, and of course, tobacco. It's very smooth, it's sweet. It's not as, uh, in the opening, aggressive and, and kind of, you know, a mishmash of notes. Red tobacco in the opening can be very off-putting, but this one is just smooth and sweet right out the get. So mystery tobacco, that stuff fell in love with and got a bottle. And then, like I said, I just started collecting these uh, Herreras. After that, the mean carved oud. Oh, is that a magnetic cap? Yes. So carved oud, this one smells similar to oud wood from Tom Ford, it really does. It has cardamom, sandalwood, and iris along with that oud. It kind of pains me to say it, but you know, carved oud is probably better than oud wood. And I'm a big fan of oud wood. I give that all the props in the world, but this is like oud wood, only smoother and, and richer and uh, longer lasting as well. It's an extrait to parfum. The iris in there really helps elevate the scent profile, takes it to the next level. Carved oud is just great. And that one is my introduction to the brand. And then something from Maresque, another blue bottle. And this thing is gorgeous to look at. It's called Sahara Blue. And this one I actually got from maxaroma.com. It's like a little work of art though, this thing. It, it just looks great to the eye, super appealing. I know the bottle's not everything, but when it looks this good, you're just like, ah, pretty. So this one has ginger, lemon, apple, uh, pink pepper, lavender, and musk, as some of the notes. Uh, it smells similar to Hasabot from Nishane. It has kind of a candy-like sweetness off the top, very fresh, versatility through the roof. People are gonna love the way this thing smells. The only drawback is it is pricey. This is not cheap at retail. If you could find it at discounters, you know, for, for a good price, definitely try to check this one out. So that stuff, I love the way it smells. And the opening in the mid, that is just ultra pleasant. It's one of those fragrances that'll have you looking very weird because you'll spray it on. And then as you're going through your day, you just start trying to huff it. You know, you're trying to catch whiffs of it yourself. So it makes you look like a weirdo. After that, let's hop back over to designers for the most wanted parfum from Azaro. This one is not a massive departure from the most wanted from last year, but it smells great. One of those compliment monsters, compliment beasts for fall and winter time. Has a sweet, slightly smoky vanilla. It has that, that warmth, that kind of gourmand edge to it. This style of fragrance for men right now, very popular. You can see fragrances that are similar-ish to this across other brands. And I get it. I mean, this stuff just smells great. And in the air, in the cold. So yeah, it's maybe not the most exciting choice because it does have that similarity to uh, last year's release, but I think it's really well done. After that, Afternoon Swim from Louis Vuitton. Uh, this one has been out for a minute, but I only got it this year. And truth be told, when I first got this, I wasn't really huge on it. Didn't like it a whole heck of a lot. And that's because the opening was off for me. Uh, not the fragrance, it wasn't off. It's just how I perceived it the first couple times I wore it, you know, two, three times, I'd say. I thought it was a little too sour for me, the citrus in the opening. And then it was like my brain recombobulated itself. It set itself back into a, a correct form. And when I smelled this, I thought, man, that's awesome. Citrus is really high quality, great citrus combo. You know, a slight, slight little tart edge to it, but sweet and fresh, kind of an ambergris base. You know, not anything terribly complex, just a very pleasant high-end vacation scent, essentially. And that's how I viewed it. And it worked perfectly for that, frankly. For me, it is a very specific scent. It's like summertime, daytime, pretty much it. But in that one specific niche where you want something citrusy, fresh, clean, a little bit aquatic, that is perfect. Last fragrance is actually two fragrances because they're from the same house. Zerzhov 
And the first fragrance is Torino 21. This one I put right up there with Zerzhov Neo as basically like their perfect go-to spring, summer, daytime fragrances. It's like Neo is 1A, Torino 21 is 1B. Torino 21 has mint and citrus, and that combination off the top is top notch. Like it's really, really high level. It's uh, very green, very brisk, very fresh, enlivening. It also has basil in there, musk, adding further aromatics to the fragrance. Uh, Torino 21 is just really, really great, especially during spring. And then Starlight is the other one. This was like my go-to fragrance for this fall. Uh, one of my favorites. Cardamom, cinnamon, almond, and amber. Some of the notes in the fragrance and that cardamom is just exquisite off the top. It is sparkly, hence the name Starlight. It's just sweet and effervescent and light, but with great depth at the same time. Starlight is one of my favorite Zerzhov's ever. I love this. If you like cardamom, check this out. This one I got a sample of first. When I sprayed that sample on, I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's going in the cart. It was like that quick. So there we go, guys. 10 of the best things I've smelled this year. Technically 11, but whatever. There are other fragrances that could have been and maybe should have been in this video as well. You know, stuff like Fort and Manly and a number of others, but I wanted to keep it not ultra long. So there we go, guys. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.